Thank you for the everlasting peace and hope that you bring to this world. We sing to you with adoration and thankfulness, for you are the true gift, gift of this holiday season. It's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. It's wonderful to just sing together tonight. Would you just take a moment, maybe just wave to your neighbors and just say Merry Christmas, and then you may have a seat. Good evening. Great to worship with you guys tonight. Thanks for joining us for our special Christmas Eve candlelight service. Um, I want to welcome the people who are joining us online too. It's great to have that option. Um, and we are excited just to celebrate with you guys tonight. My name's Jen Reese, um, if I haven't met you before. Uh, I'm one of the pastors here, and we are just so excited about all that God is doing um, here at Vineyard East. So if you guys don't mind, right now in the service, I'd have you take out your phones and text in your attendance. If you would text in the word here, if you're here in the room, if you're online, if you would just put here in the chat and then we'll know you were joining us and maybe we might say hi to you or maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. So if you guys could text that in, that phone number's up there, text in the word here. Also, while you're doing that, I want to tell you about a special opportunity. Um, twice a year, we take up a special offering for alms, and that supports four major ministries that we really, really believe in. And so today, if you would like to give to those, you can also text the word give to that same phone number. And then you can, uh, it'll send you back a link to a website to give it through there, and you can note it as almsgiving. Um, and we, we are really really, really passionate about these ministries. So it's Convoy of Hope, Global Orphan Project, Beauty for Ashes, and Shelter Wood Ministries. So it supports the poor, the orphan, the prisoner, and the troubled teens. And if you'd like more, in, more information on any of those uh, ministries, there are pamphlets out on the table, or you could look them up um, online as well. But they're all great ministries that, you know, they can go out and do specialized ministry for people that we can just make our investments go further that way. They're really good at what they do. And uh, we are proud to be able to support them twice a year. So if you want to give to that, text in give, or you can prepare your offering envelope and write alms on it. And then when you drop it in the box, um, it'll, it'll get sent to those ministries. So I think, are we ready to start the Christmas service? Yeah, would you guys stand with me for the reading of scripture? We are in Matthew 1. Verses 22 and 23, and it says, All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Let's pray. Lord, we turn our hearts to you this evening. We thank you for this, this opportunity to come and celebrate the birth of your son. God, I pray you'd speak to us through Matt's words tonight, God, and that we would just rest in your presence, Lord. After a crazy, crazy year, we just come together tonight, Lord. We join our hearts and our voices in celebration of your son. We love you, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Well, Merry Christmas. It's good to see you. Glad you're here, and if you're joining us online, welcome. We miss you and look forward to a time when we can all be together again. Can I share with you a story about my experience with Christmas growing up? Okay, good. I'm going to do it, so. When I was growing up, I was the type of kid who I just wanted one item for Christmas, okay? I just wanted one thing. I said, Mom, Dad, if you get me this, I'm good. I didn't go through the toy store saying, oh, I need this toy and that toy and all these different things. I just wanted one thing. Now, for some reason, my parents, quit laughing, Mom. This isn't funny. <laughs> for some reason, my parents thought it was hilarious to hide that one item from me 
every year and make it feel like I wasn't going to get what I really wanted. Yeah. (laughs) And so every year, I'd start unwrapping packages, and I'd open the first one. It'd be a pair of socks. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be like, cool. That's awesome. I'd open the next one. I'd get a new pair of pajamas. Then I'd start looking for boxes that were about the right size and the right weight. Right, and I'd open that up, and that wouldn't be it either. And I'd get to the end of all of my packages, and I didn't get it. Yeah. And I remember feeling, as I'm going through the packages, I remember the feeling setting in that things weren't going to go my way. Right? And it was just one thing after another, one package after another, this feeling of despair, no hope, began to set in. And every time when I got done opening all of my packages, my parents would start to giggle a little bit. And they'd say, hey, Matt, did you have a good Christmas? And on the verge of tears, I would say, yeah, thanks for all my stuff. And then they'd start to laugh and say, oh, I think you missed one behind the couch or wherever it was. And then there would be the new Nintendo 64, yeah, Or one year I actually got a puppy. I actually got a puppy. All I wanted was a puppy. And somehow my parents hid a puppy from me (laughs) that whole time. If you, uh, parents, if you would like your kids to not be traumatized and not have a lot of issues to work through their whole life, I encourage you, don't do that. (laughs) (laughs) But that is my earliest memory of that feeling of things not going my way, of one thing after another. And as we get older, many of you know that you have those times in your life where things just aren't going your way. You have those days where you wake up late, and then you're going to be late for work. And you get to your car, and your car doesn't start. Then your wife calls you, and she's backed over a screwdriver and punctured her tire. Is that just me? Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> We have those days. Many of you may be feeling 2020 has been a year like that. It's been one thing after another. Setback after setback. Some of you are in here saying the last five years of my life have been that way. The last 10 years of my life have been that way. It's one thing after another after another. Setback after setback. Broken dream after broken dream. I watch a lot of YouTube Um, Too much YouTube, if I can put it that way. And the other day in my YouTube suggestions, uh, this video popped up, and it was entitled Ichabod's Christmas. Ichabod's Christmas. And I didn't watch the video. I don't know what it was about, but that title stuck out to me. And it reminded me of this story in the Bible in 1 Samuel chapter 4. And in this story, there's a woman who's about to give birth to a son. Sounds kind of familiar. But this woman is in a time in her life where things are not going her way. This woman is an Israelite. And what happens is the Philistines attack Israel. They defeat them and they steal the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant is the symbol of God's presence on the nation of Israel. It's the most important natural, national, and cultural symbol that Israel has. It'd be like if someone stole our Declaration of Independence. So the Ark is stolen by their enemy, the Philistines. This woman's husband is in that battle, and he is killed. The Bible says that messengers come to tell this woman's father-in-law, that, her, that his son has been killed in battle. And the Bible says, when her father-in-law heard that his son had died, he was so shocked he flipped out of his chair and he broke his neck and died. Don't you just know that's, that's not a good day for this lady, is it? And what that means for her, with her husband being dead and her father-in-law being dead, is her livelihood is threatened. She's going to be a, a widow 
in ancient Near Eastern society, a woman without a husband, without a family, doesn't have much hope. Life is not going this woman's way. And that's where we pick up in 1 Samuel 4, verse 19. When she heard the news that the ark of God was captured and that her father-in-law and her husband were dead, she bowed and gave birth. Great time to give birth, right, ladies? For her pains came upon her. And about the time of her death, the women attending her said, Do not be afraid, for you have borne a son. But she did not answer or pay attention. She named the child Ichabod. Ichabod's Christmas. She named the child Ichabod. Several weeks ago here in church, we learned the Hebrew word for glory. So this will be a refresher for some of you. But the Hebrew word for glory is kavod. And what this woman names her child is ikavod. Ikavod, which literally means no glory. The glory has left. The glory has departed. And in English, we say ichabod. The glory has left. Can I encourage you? Don't name your future by what you're going through in your present. Don't name your future by what you're going through in your present. This woman, she looks at her life and she says, the glory has departed my nation. The glory has departed my life. God's favor has left my family, has left my marriage. So just name that child what I'm presently going through. Name that child Ichabod. The glory has departed. Can I tell you, I have good news for you tonight. The story of Christmas is not Ichabod's story. It's not Ichabod's Christmas. The story of Christmas, like we just read in the book of Matthew, is the story of Emmanuel. God is with us. Are you out there? God is with us. But you're going to have to decide, are you going to go through your life with Ichabod? The glory has departed. God's favor has left my life. Are you going to go through your life with Emmanuel? God is with me. It's your choice. Many people, they walk through their entire life with Ichabod. Ichabod tells you the glory has departed. Nothing good's going to come your way. Life's just going to be a hard thing over and over again. Ichabod steals your ability to dream. He steals your ability to hope, to see your destiny. Many Christians let the message, the glory has departed, get a hold of their life. Christians, those who believe in God, trust in Jesus but they can only see the negative. They only see the negative in their church or they only see the negative, the bad things in the church. Everything's shallow. Everything's falling apart. It's all fake. They can only see the bad in their marriage, in their relationships, in their career. They've let life knock them down. They've let setback after setback and broken dream after broken dream get a hold of their life. I'm not saying we don't go through things. We all go through things. People who know God go through the same things as people without God, but we don't go through them with the same spirit. We go through them with Emmanuel. God is with us. God is for us. God is on our side. Amen. Are you out there? We live in a society and a culture today that's always screaming at you, the glory has departed. Just turn on the news. Pull up your Facebook news feed. You'll see the wrong party is in the Senate. The wrong people are in the House. The glory has left our economy. The glory has left our education system. It doesn't matter what side you're on. COVID-19 will get you. The vaccine will get you. Right? (laughs) If you don't wear a mask, you're going to get sick. If you do wear a mask, you're going to (laughs) suffocate. It's all Ichabod. 
all the glory is departed. The good days are behind you. There's nothing good coming your way. That is not the message of God's people. Are you listening? That is not the message of the church. The message of the church is Emmanuel. God is with us. Can you say God is with us? I worry sometimes that even in the church, the message, the glory has departed, gets proclaimed. I hear people say, where's the move of God now? Where's revival? We have pastors and preachers telling us that miracles are over. Healing's over. The glory is departed. But I want to tell you tonight that the message of Emmanuel is that the same God of the Bible, the God who heals the blind, who restores the sick, is still here. He's Emmanuel. And he's here to work powerful miracles and breakthroughs in the impossible situations in your life. He hasn't left you. He's Emmanuel. He's God with us. I was thinking about um, the Christmas story, Mary and Joseph. If you know that story, you know Mary comes to Joseph, her fiance. She says, hey, Joseph, I'm pregnant. Now, you know Joseph is thinking in that moment, the glory has departed, (laughs) right? This relationship is over. In fact, the Bible tells you that he's thinking that. But he gets through that because an angel comes and tells him, no, this is actually, this is God. And we saw the star a couple days ago, if you were outside. And so he's looking up, he sees the star, he gets the message from the angel. He says, okay, I think I can, I can deal with this somehow. And you'd think from there, the story would just be all rosy and good from that point. But that's not what happens. Just as Joseph is getting his bearings... He's decided we're going to go forward with this new family. Then King Herod decides, I'm going to kill all the newborn sons. And Joseph has to take Mary, and they have to flee to Egypt to protect this child that isn't even his. Right? So they have to leave their home, leave their family. They're exiled to Egypt. They stay there until King Herod dies, and they travel back home only to find out that Herod's son has now taken over and he is worse than his father was. So they take another detour and settle down in podunk country, Nazareth, where there's a little under 300 people. And you got to know Joseph and Mary are thinking, this is not how I saw my life going, right? This is not right. This is Ichabod. The glory has departed. And I want to tell some of you tonight who are going through upheaval in your life and hard times that it may look like Ichabod, but if Christmas is going to tell you anything, it's that in the midst of that, it's actually Emmanuel working. And he has divine purposes and pathways on your life, and he is still in control. And he is not distant from you. He is right in the midst of it with you. That's his name, Emmanuel. God is with us. Keep Emmanuel in your marriage. It's easy to go through hard times in your marriage and say, Ichabod, the glory has left this relationship. It's time to find something new. I want to remind you and encourage you, you have Emmanuel with you. Grab each other by the hand. Remind each other, God is with us. We can get through this, not because of us, but because of Emmanuel. He's right here with us. Keep Emmanuel in your family. Keep Emmanuel in your career. Remember, he's with you. Begin to close tonight. I thought I'd close on a really cute moment by showing you my dog when he was a puppy. (laughs) Now, before we roll this video, what you're going to notice about my dog is that he loves me very much. And more than anything, he just wants to be with me because he loves me so much.
So can you go ahead and roll the video of baby dog? Come on, come on. Oh, there he is. He is not that anymore. Come on. Oh, no. No, didn't quite make it. <laughs> yeah, he is, he's about 150 pounds now, so that is not him anymore. But what you notice in that video is he was trying really hard to get up that step to get to me. <laughs> he just wanted to be with me. But unfortunately, that step was just a little bit too much for him to get over. Try as hard as he could, he just could not make it up that step. And there may be many of you in here today, like myself, who have thought we could get to God through our effort, through working hard enough. Maybe you didn't even know what you were looking for, but you know there was more to life than what you've experienced so far. And maybe you can experience this person called God that you've heard people speak about. And you think, maybe I can get to him if I'm just a better person. If I just do the right thing. Maybe if I'm successful enough, I'll encounter this God. Maybe if my behavior is good enough, I'll have a spiritual experience with this God. But the story of Christmas is the story that God looked out and he saw us trying and trying to get to him. And he realized that we were never going to be able to do it. We were never going to make it up that step, if I can put it that way. And he does this really interesting thing, the Bible tells us in the Christmas story. Instead of standing there and saying, come on, you can make it. You can do it. I believe in you. God actually doesn't do that. He actually looks at us trying to get to him, trying to fill the hole in our life. And he does this really unexpected thing. And he comes to us. He comes to us as a human. He comes to us as a little baby. He closes the gap that we could not close. And so it doesn't matter how far away you think you are from God or how close you feel like you got to him through your effort, he closes the gap either way. He takes the step fully towards you. And all you have to do is say, I accept that. I believe it. And let God show you how much he loves you. Let God love you. That's what changes and transform it, tra transforms us when God takes that step to us, picks us up in his arms, and loves us. That's all there is to it. Would you stand with me? <clears throat> if you're going through a difficult time in your life, I encourage you, remember Emmanuel. Remember God is with you. Listen to his voice. The Bible tells us, take every thought captive. So when you hear Ichabod starting to whisper in your ear, nothing good's coming your way, take that thought and throw it out. Say, that is not Emmanuel. You have the choice to make. I'm going to go through my life with Emmanuel. And if you're here today and you've never made the decision to walk with God, you've never realized that he came for you, he came to be with you, then I invite you to just pray this prayer after me. If you'd all bow your heads and close your eyes. And if everyone would just repeat after me as we close tonight. Lord Jesus. I believe you came. I believe you died. Thank you for closing the gap and for coming to, to rescue me. 
I commit my life to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to light the Christ candle. And this light actually represents that God is with us. And those who follow God, we now get to represent God to the world. His light shines through us. I'm going to pass this flame to Jen. I've been told there's a special way to do this. So, Jen, are you going to demonstrate, Jen? Don't so that, mess it up. Okay, we don't want to light anything on fire. Okay. So, if you have the flame, you keep your candle upright. Don't burn down the theater. stars are brightly shining it is the night of our dear Savior's birth long lay the world in sin and never pining till he
pray over us while we have our candles lit um, and then we will carefully blow them out and I'll wish you a Merry Christmas before we dismiss but will you pray with me Father we thank you that you came to us that you are with us in all the mess of 2020 you are with us in whatever 2021 brings God you have been with us from the start God and we thank you for that you are God with us. Lord, we worship you. We praise you. I pray that, God, as we go out of here and we celebrate Christmas tomorrow with our families or just in our homes, Lord, that your presence would be felt. God, that this fire that we hold in our hands right now, God, that we would remember that though we were going to blow out these candles, that your fire burns within us, that your light is within us because we trust in you and we believe in you. God, we love you, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Merry Christmas. Oh, it's the dawn of a new light breaking its love.